Welcome back to a breaking news edition of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Pawlicki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, and uh, Minnesota Vikings finally making some moves here in free agency. Liberta, after quite the long free agent meeting with Zadarius Smith, they have finally signed him. Uh, we don't know contract details yet. We've just seen the report that they're in agreement on a deal. I mean, it, we kind of had the feeling with how long he's been here Uh on this free agent visit, they took him out to dinner, probably to Manny's Steakhouse, like the classic free agent visit dinners go. I mean, what are your thoughts, I guess? I mean, th- we were kind of questioning whether or not this was actually going to happen just because, you know, the Vikings basically have no cap space. You know, it's it was interesting to see, you know, how they could maybe potentially find a way to uh, maneuver the cap, open up some space. And now the question remains, are they pairing him with Daniel Hunter? Um, is the plan to trade Daniel Hunter to open up cap space? So th- that remains interesting, but I'm really intrigued by the idea of pairing Smith and Hunter together. Smith is only 29 years old still. So what are your thoughts on this signing? Yeah, you know, I am pretty excited about this. This is obviously the biggest move the Vikings have made under this new regime outside of extending Kirk for another season. This is definitely a big one that's uh, – really going to help us a lot. I think I was pretty excited to hear that we got him just because he's had some good production over the years, and especially Mm -hmm. these last couple of the Packers. I know last year he was hurt for basically all of it, but the year before that, he still had 14 sacks and the year before that he led the league in pressures. So, I mean, this guy can get done. So I think he's great to add to this new three, four defense and, yeah, especially Depp Holcham from the Packers. I mean, right. uh, a good player, get him from the rival. I mean, uh, embracing the uh, purple people eaters on Twitter, uh, mm-hmm. making making mention of that, making reference to that. So uh, I think this is a this is a good move by the uh, front office to move in on a proven pass rusher because I think those are always needed on good teams. So uh, since we're in this win-now window that we've created here, I think Zedaria Smith is the perfect signing. So I can't wait to see what he's got honestly coming forward here this year yeah same and i'm kind of curious what the contract details are going to be because he had an agreement with the ravens that was Mm -hmm. going to pay him i think roughly eight million a year something along those lines and all of a sudden that fell through so i'm kind of curious what the deal was there on why that deal fell through there was never really any reporting on why they weren't able to work it work it out in the end i don't think so um yeah, also, maybe maybe he was intrigued by having Mike Pettin here and his other uh, outside linebackers coach, Mike Smith, from the Packers as well. That's possible. Uh, potentially being paired with Daniil Hunter, getting to face the Packers twice a season after they just cut him. I've, I'm sure that's you know high on his list of uh, attractiveness for the Vikings. So, I mean, there's probably a ton of things at play here, but as long as he stays healthy, and that's kind of the thing with both him and Daniil Hunter, you, 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 sorry, you're banking on them to, to stay healthy. But, you know, Hunter, I'm not really worried about because he's just a beast of a human being. Like, I think he'll be okay. He's kind of had a couple freak injuries. Zedarius Smith, wasn't it like a back injury that kept him out most of last season? I don't remember exactly what it was. Yes, I believe it was a back injury. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a little concerning. But once again, he's only 29 years old. He did come back at the end of the season, too. So, I don't know. I'm intrigued by this pairing. They definitely needed to make a move like this to help the defense because, yeah, you can draft all these players, but you're still going to need to sign another you know, veteran or two to get the defense back on track from where it's been the last couple of years. So now basically the cornerback position just remains. I mean, linebacker, you're kind of set now between your outside linebackers and your inside linebackers with Hicks and Kendricks. And then, you know, you got still got Harrison Smith and, you know, probably Cam Bynum as the other starting safety, but you really need to figure out the cornerback position now, which I'd, I'd imagine they're going to attack aggressively in the draft coming up. Yeah, that's a gaping hole that needs to be addressed as soon as possible after now this move has been made. And I think that's the obvious, obvious hole that needs to be plugged. And at this point, we have Dan Slaughter and nobody else really. I mean, I get we have these other depth corners like guys like Chris Boyd, special teams ace, you know, and then you got um, Harrison Hand, who we drafted a couple of years ago. But like as far as starting caliber players go that you can rely on, it's it's Dan Slaughter. So we yep. got to add some new bodies in here. Probably starts with drafting one in the first round and this upcoming draft here next month. So I'm hoping, still hoping for either Derek Stingley or Sauce Gardner, but I don't know how likely it is. I could very well see them both ending up in the top 10. So mm-hmm. 
we're certainly going to have to uh, weigh our options there and evaluate a lot of different corners. Maybe it, the, the value would be better in the second round, but we're going to have to find a second, at least a second starting corner opposite Dantzler and going to have to find a nickel of some sort, whether it be a cheap veteran deal or whatever it might be. So I I think that's got to be the next move here in this with this offseason. But you know what? I wouldn't mind the next move being signing J.C. Treader either. I was just going to bring that up. I'll, I'll be curious how much cap space we're left with here because – I think JC Treader needs to be a super high priority on this team's list. Yes. I mean, if you can if you can lock down Zadarius Smith and JC Treader, and then you're kind of maxed out for cap space, I'm okay with that. Because yeah. then in the draft, you can really focus on defense. I mean, obviously, you don't want to get yourself into a rabbit hole where you're just picking for need because that's where you tend to draft bus players. But yeah. at the same time, the offense is so loaded that you can. I just think you can really focus on defense, and maybe within a draft, and you know, maybe you get some contributions from guys last year that didn't really play much. You know, maybe between the, these next couple of drafts, you can really turn this defense around all of a sudden, and maybe you get more contributions from a guy like DJ Wanham or Armand Watts or some guys that you know have been playing but just haven't you know fully reached their potential, whatever their potential may be, I guess. But so. I don't know. Maybe it's doable to get this defense turned around quicker than, you know, you would think, especially when you the offense is locked and ready to go. And it's going to be for the next two years. As long as Kirk Cousins is here, you're still probably going to have Dalvin Cook. You're still going to have Jefferson, obviously. Thielen's going to be around. Um, Irv Smith is going to need a contract. But, you know, as long as he has a good season, I'm sure they'd be willing to give him a contract. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. But it's really starting to look like uh, other than J.C. Treader, I think defense is really going to be the priority from here on out. I could ask me, we have to start getting some more young core players in here again just because it's been so long since we drafted any good mainstays. So I think that's yep. got to be priority A in the draft and not just at the top, but probably throughout it. I mean, even with the depth picks on day three that everybody likes to joke about, you know, those were the Rick mm-hmm. picks at the yep. at the end, especially in like the sixth and seventh rounds. But like we, we got to just get bodies in there. Hopefully as, as many quality players as you can find. It depends how Kwesi wants to approach it, I suppose, if he's more of a – limited picks but higher quality as far as like picking higher in the draft maybe that's the way he wants to go but yeah i mean whatever it is sort of the strategy might be I, we just got to find more defensive guys that have some promise that you could actually foresee being on the team like three years from now yeah and i you know i was questioning the vision at first i still kind of am just because i don't agree with you know kicking the can down the road and maxing out your cap space but yeah you know at least at least it appears they're trying to bolster this team a little bit. And if they do sign like a JC Treader, then that only furthers that, you know, that they're trying to win now and they're trying to give Kirk the best uh, surrounding cast that he possibly can have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to move forward and potentially, you know, not just win a division, not just win a playoff game, but try to make a run. So whether it's the right move or not, obviously remains to be seen. They got to play 17 games next year to sort all that out. But I mean, it appears they're giving themselves about a two-year window here to really try to compete for a Super Bowl. And then if that fails, I mean, it's going to be probably quite the rebuild unless, you know, they really hit some home runs in the draft here the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. I, I think this is a quite quite a way to start a new regime, I guess. I know, I know we've kind of beat that drum a lot here, but mm-hmm. still, it's it's not really the way I want to go. But they're, I'd say with this signing, especially, and especially if you get Treader in here too, I can live with it a little bit more. I think it makes yep. a little bit more sense and it makes this off season feel a lot better. At least I know we haven't made a ton of moves, but those would be two pretty big ones with Smith and Treader. So. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the off season continues. There's honestly still quite a few big names that are still out there oh, you yeah. know, a week plus into this uh, free agency period. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see where the rest of these bigger names go, but um, I think the Vikings are actually kind of being smart, just kind of waiting it out with some of these guys too. Like, you know, they were patient with Zadarius Smith. Granted, it took him, you know, not not agreeing to a contract with Baltimore after they appeared to have an agreement in place. But yeah, um, yeah, just, just super interesting. Any other final thoughts from you before we take off here on the on how the Vikings roster is starting to shape out? Yeah, I, I guess the way it's looking, it. Feels like we're jumping into one of those years again, just like we were last year, where it's super top heavy, where our depth is probably very bad. But if our mm-hmm. starters can stay healthy and stay on the field and play to their level you expect them to, then we should be a formidable squad that can compete with anybody. But it's like, is that going to be enough? I don't know at the end of the day. 
Yeah, I will say like a signing like this, if you could have DJ Wanham really as like your third de- defensive end, I'm good with that. And then sure. maybe you maybe you get some development out of a guy like Patrick Jones or Janarius Robinson. Neither guy, I mean Robinson missed the entire season. Yeah. Patrick Jones hardly saw any snaps. So I mean maybe you get some development from guys like that too. Um I don't have a whole lot of hope for guys like Troy Dye and Chaz Surratt, especially with a scheme change like this. I don't I just I don't know if I mean Chaz Surratt's already twenty four years old and he's He's like only played linebacker for a couple of years of his life, so yeah. I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not too optimistic about that. But maybe they'll find a you know a linebacker or two in this draft that you know are more are more uh, polished, we'll say, than the raw Chaz Surratt and Troy Dye. So yes. um, yeah, I think you know obviously they'll make some more signings, but uh, it's getting close to turning attention to the draft. I mean, we're just a little over a month out. As time is just flying here. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's time to uh, dive deep into those mock drafts and start thinking about all the scenarios that could play out for this Vikings team, especially on that first night in a month from now. For sure. So we'll have to start doing some mock drafts here again. We figured we'd let free agency kind of settle first, but yeah, we'll get back into those. But that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Uh, Please be sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so. Uh, feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and leave your comments below. What are your thoughts on the Vikings finally signing finally signing Zadarius Smith and what he brings to this defense and uh, what other moves they may make. And if you're, if you're starting to turn a little bit in towards of uh, being in favor of the win now window, if you weren't before. So let us know your thoughts below and until next time.